Last year was a really bad year to be a fan of the Louisville Cardinals. To be fair, no one was expecting them to be good. They brought in first-time head coach Kenny Payne in the offseason. Their previous head coach Chris Mack was let go midway through the previous season after starting the season 11-9. Now Payne's a former Louisville player. He was a first-round NBA pick. He'd been a longtime assistant, coaching at Oregon, Kentucky, and then at the New York Knicks. But we'd never seen him in a head coaching role. So before the season, when asked about his coaching style, Payne said, First of all, I think in order to win games, you've got to be a great defensive team. And I want to be a great defensive team. Per Ken Palm, in that first season, their defensive efficiency is 112.2, which ranks them 313th out of 363 NCAA basketball teams. Which explains why they only won four games. Please like and subscribe. Last year, Louisville had an offensive efficiency of 102. So when you subtract the offensive from the defensive efficiency ratings, you get an adjusted efficiency rating of minus 10.17, which means the average opponent was more likely to score 10.17 points more per game than the Cardinals were. Louisville started the year 0-9. To make things worse, they lost their first three games by only one point before running into some big name power five schools who just crushed them and eventually they found two wins in mid-December. For a team that was projected to go 13-16, and 16, this was an abysmal season. Remember, the year before, Louisville had just suffered their first losing campaign in over two decades, going 13-19, and 19, with their head coach being fired partway through the season. So this new era of Louisville started out rough. They stumbled out the gate at 4-28. I mean, 2-18 and 18 in the ACC, they certainly set a program record, though, in most losses in a single season, by a wide margin. Coming into the 23-24 season, the basketball analytics site Torvik is not very high on Louisville again. It ranks the Cardinals as the number 132 team in college basketball. They're the third lowest in the ACC, sitting ahead of only Syracuse, who's at 186, and Notre Dame, who's the 199th team. Louisville saw seven players transfer out, and that's probably a good thing after a season that they had last year, but it also means this team will look completely different for fans going into the year. So who can Louisville expect to see on this new roster? At point guard, Sky Clark, a former five-star point guard recruit who was once committed to Kentucky and who left Illinois in the middle of last season, has committed to Louisville. The six foot three, 200 pound guard, Clark was pursued by Louisville last spring following his decommitment from Kentucky, and he ultimately picked Illinois where he started 12 of the team's first 13 games before leaving the program January 6. Clark was averaging 7 points, 3.7 rebounds, and 2.1 assists per game for Illinois prior to his departure. Louisville desperately needs guards, preferably guards that are good enough to run the show for an NCAA tournament team. Clark, with the right tweaks and tutelage, possesses that ability. Louisville also adds 6-foot Tyler Johnson, who chose the Cardinals over Creighton, DePaul, Memphis, Mississippi State, North Carolina State, and St. John's. Now Johnson is a little bit shorter than most players that Kenny Payne has typically recruited previously, but he makes up for that by already having a decently toned upper body and a solid wingspan. He might have to add a small amount of weight though, but not too much. As you can imagine, given his frame, Johnson's incredibly shifty and agile. He moves well in the open court, has quick feet, he can stop and go fairly quickly, and is overall fluid with the ball. For a point guard, he also has good vertical and can occasionally play above the rim. Johnson is the very definition of a point guard. He's very much a floor general type, as he always seems to want to dictate what's going on offensively with a dominating mindset. Thanks in part to his physical intangibles, he has incredible handles. Whether he's one-on-one, -on, -one, on the drive, or in traffic, he always has the ball in a tight window. When it comes to his passes, he has a fair bit of flair for the dramatic, consistently displaying crafty or flashy passes that are highlight reel worthy. On the drive, he is very good on the hesitation move and has a consistent floater. Despite being just six feet tall, 
He's very aggressive underneath the rim and in traffic, and he knows how to get to his spot. As is the case with volume scores though, Johnson's shooting percentages tend to leave a little to be desired. He does have a good mid-range outside jump shot, but he's very streaky with it. His release placement and timing could improve some, and his shot selection isn't the best at times. While he regularly displays awesome passing, he also has a tendency to turn the ball over. Defensively, he does have good timing when it comes to poking the ball out for steals. He just needs to work a bit on his urgency of his closeouts. Johnson's also a little bit underrated as an offensive rebounder. Him and Sky Clark will be a great one-two punch for the point guard for the upcoming season. At shooting guard, Trey White transfers in from University of Southern California, where the former guard slash forward was named to the Pac-12 All-Freshman team this past season for the Trojans. The 6'7", 210-pound shooting guard small forward didn't waste any time becoming an impact player as a true freshman for USC. He made 33 appearances starting 29 of those games last season, while averaging 9 points, 5.1 rebounds, and shooting 47.4% from the field. A former top 50 four-star recruit who was seen as a sneaky potential one-and-done player uh, entering last year if things had really broke his way, he's seen to have a lot of upside and had potential to have elevated the Trojans to new heights. So it's a bit of a surprise to see him leave for Louisville. He's physical as a driver and versatile in how you can use him across the two through the four positions. Defensively, White was really good for freshmen and gave his team real size and athleticism on the wing. He's the kind of versatile player whom teams hunt across the country to find, and one that I don't think will get to his fourth year in college before turning pro. The scoring upside is extremely high here. White could slot in to a starting role for the Cardinals next season and form what looks to be a very promising young nucleus at Louisville. Trenton Flowers initially a member of the 2024 class, the 6'8 Flowers has reclassified into the 23 class where he chose Louisville over the likes of North Carolina, Creighton, Arkansas, Kansas, and Alabama. He now ranks as the number 28th overall prospect nationally. He's a 6'8 guard who can score, rebound, pass, and defend. He's an elite athlete with very good basketball IQ. He has a bright future in his game, and he has the discipline and work ethic to be a great basketball player. Trenton Flowers calls himself a unicorn because he's a rare player at 6'8 that shows flashes of handles to attack closeouts and operate in pick and roll situations. He is a gym rat, and you have to pull him out of the gym most of the time. Now, Flowers averaged 15.5 points, 6.4 rebounds, and shot 45% from the floor and 33% from the three-point range during his junior season at Combine Academy. Coming in, I don't expect him to start, but he will be there in probably the backup role for the two spot and should get some really good minutes this year. Hopefully, he'll show some real growth. I'm not sure how long Trey White will be there before going pro. Flowers just turned 18 in March, making him the youngest player in this Louisville roster, but the talent and basketball acumen are just off the charts. Coran Davis, the 6'7 guard from Gary, Indiana, comes to Louisville from Los Angeles Southwest Community College. He'll have two years of eligibility remaining, coming from the JUCO level. Coran is a multi-dimensional talent and he can be effective in the positions from the one all the way to the three. He has a knack for scoring at all three levels, while also being able to rebound, make plays for his teammates at a high level, and he possesses length and athleticism suitable for ACC play. He averaged 23.8 points, 6.7 rebounds, and 3.2 assists his sophomore season at Los Angeles Southwest. He also shot 48% from the field, 33% for three-point range, and made 81% of his free throws. Now, I've seen him projected as the third string point guard, but I assume he's more of a glue guy who just kind of fills minutes as needed from the one through three spots throughout the season. At small forward, six foot five, Mike James returns as a redshirt sophomore after he suffered a torn Achilles tendon in his left leg in practice and missed the entire 21-22 season. Last season, he started all 32 games, averaging 10.1 points, the second best on the team, 3.3 rebounds in 31 minutes, while shooting 45.3% from the field, 35.7 from three, and 78% from the free throw line. He's become more of a scorer now, and he doesn't hesitate. The Louisville basketball wing moves to a spot behind the three-point line. When a teammate swings his ball his way, he's ready to launch. He sets his feet, sizes up a shot, and lets it fly. He's really stepped into the role of a shooter last season, and I expect him to hold on to that spot and keep it rolling this year. Six foot seven, Caleb Glenn brings a kind of drive and dedication that's exactly what Louisville roster needs at this moment. He will pair nicely with the energy that Emmanuel Okafor brings to the team 
and according to him, he will be able to bring something different than Curtis Williams Jr. to the table. His junior year in high school, he shot 64% from the field and expanded his game to the perimeter, knocking down 36% of his three-point attempts. He comes into college ready in size and should fit as a multi-positional player above the three and the four spot. While it feels like he'll be fighting for time this year, he should see a big increase in years two and three in the program. Basically tied to him is Curtis Williams Jr. He's an aggressive, six foot seven, sharp shooting wing. Williams' game is very similar to Glenn's. He's a former five-star talent with an excellent outside shot, both in spot up and pull up situations. He finishes well through contact and rebounds very well for his position. Like Glenn, he can play the three or the four spot. Both Glenn and Williams feel like players who could be immediate contributors in this season for the cards but they will be fighting for time. Long term, in years two and three, we should see this interchangeable duo become stars under pain. But it would be a serious step forward to carve out legitimate minutes in probably the most crowded position on this roster this coming season. Next, the six foot eight transfer, Danilo Jovanovic, comes across the ACC from Miami. Danilo is a talented, tough, skilled basketball player with an old school mentality. The 6'8", 220-pound wing appeared in one game last season for the Canes, playing the final two minutes and eight seconds in Miami's 79-56 blowout win over St. Francis, Brooklyn. He did not log any stats. He missed five games of the season due to a left ankle injury before making his debut. Once healthy, Miami coach Jim Laranega opted to shelve him and pursue a medical redshirt. Since he hasn't played in college, looking back during his senior year of high school, he averaged 29 points, 11 rebounds, and four assists per game, where he came out of high school as a three-star prospect. He still maintains a relatively lean build, but he does have solid muscle mass and a decent frame to be able to handle defenders either in the paint or on his way to the basket. According to the Wisconsin Sports Network, Jovanovic is a versatile player who can score with his back to the basket and from the perimeter. For a big man who's left-handed, he can create mismatches on the baseline or the perimeter with his lengthy wingspan and ability to knock down the three ball. His three-point shooting ability was showcased the most during his junior year where he was shooting 35%, and it slightly decreased to 32% during his senior year, but he also averaged a double-double in his final high school season, so not too much can be disappointing about there. I see him being a deep depth chart add for the three spot and maybe the third guy in the rotation for the four spot. He could see some minutes, but I expect him mostly to be in late game situations unless he just develops at an unprecedented rate and he'll be someone to build for for next season. At power forward, Brandon Huntley Hatfield, a six foot 10 rising junior. He started his career as a five-star prospect going into Tennessee and then came over to Louisville last year. Last season, he started 21 of 24 games in which he appeared, averaging 6.7 points and a team-high 5.4 rebounds. He also shot 47% from the field and 75 from the three-point line, and led the team with 18 blocks. He did miss eight games last year due to a foot injury. Brandon can really handle the rock for a big man, and he has a knack for scoring the ball, showing off nice perimeter skills and a feel for the game. His outside shot shows promise and is starting to be a weapon for him, making him very tough to defend. Brandon has a very quick first step and can blow by defenders and get to the rim. He scores in a variety of ways and can hit outside shots and can overpower defenders in the lane. He plays above the rim, has very nice athleticism, and a really strong frame. I expect him to be an impact starter this season and really start building on his draft stock for the next level. Finally, there's J.J. Taylor, a 6'8 rising senior power forward who played 32 games last season, starting 15 of them. He averaged 6.9 points, 3.8 rebounds, and half a block, while shooting 47% from the floor, 31% from three, and 73% from the free throw line. Taylor is mobile, he's fluid, good athlete that gets off the ground with ease. Offensively, Taylor has a terrific set of hands, impressive touch around the goal, and good footwork. He's also versatile enough to step out on the floor and make shots from the high post, from the mid-range. I'd expect to see him in the backup power forward role this season and get pretty good minutes, hopefully building on his growth from last season. Rounding out the roster here at center, Emmanuel Okafor, a 6'9", 220-pound sophomore, returns after he appeared in five games, joining the team mid-season during conference play last year. In his appearances, he averaged 4.4 points, 4.2 rebounds, and 1.4 blocks while shooting 42.9% from the field and made his only three-point attempt. After that, he missed six games with an ankle injury. He's a very high-energy big. 
He's trying to get blocks, rebounds. He's all over the place. He doesn't stop moving or talking. He's a natural scorer. You can see it even in his limited play from last year. He made great plays. Some of the passes that he caught and finished weren't great passes. He caught them, gathered them, and put them in the basket. There's also a cultural difference with him. Being from Lagos, Nigeria, he does not take practices or play for granted the way sometimes American teammates might. He gives 100% every minute. He's bringing an intensity that forces you to play hard or else he's probably just gonna elbow you in the mouth, hit you in the nose, hit you across the chest, and then be very vocal about it. He's young and we saw him make an impact after joining the team in conference play. Having been on the team and had a, a summer to progress, I expect to see him take huge steps forward going into next season. Which leads us to our last player on the roster here, finally Dennis Evans. A 7 foot 1, 220 pound center and 4 star prospect. He's one of the best defenders of his class. Evans has all the tools to become one of the most feared big men in the ACC. A one time Minnesota signee, Evans stands at 7 foot 2 with a 9 foot 8 inch standing reach. But he doesn't just rely on his size to terrorize opponents, he possesses above average athleticism and agility for his size, and is capable of staying with smaller players even if they get a step on him. Evans possesses the requisite size and skill set to be an ACC starter sooner than later, and his offensive game catches up to his defensive game. We could see a ton of time for him in the 23-24 season, or more likely the year following. Much of his ability to see the court next season, of course, will hinge on improvements of his backcourt mates. If big man Brandon Huntley Hatfield and forward JJ Taylor continue their progression in the offseason, the Louisville basketball frontcourt could be a hard place to find playing time. Factor in that Emmanuel Okafor showed off the steepest upward trajectory of any player in last year's squad, and there's reason to believe that Evans will mostly be shelved until the 24-25 season. However, 7'2 shot blockers are not exactly easy to come by, and if Evans can continue to round out his game, he may very well be the most successful player in this class. So here we have it, a completely rebuilt roster. Now losing L. Ellis undoubtedly hurts, but landing both Sky Clark and Tyler Johnson is a good consolation prize. Not to mention that there are now two viable options at the point guard instead of one. Both do seem to have slight issues with turnovers, but each player has four general traits that Louisville desperately needs. Over at the two guard, there's a fair amount of inexperience, but also a lot of potential. Trey White will have to improve his three-point shooting, but he has incredible upside thanks to his length, athleticism, and scoring ability. Both Trenton Flowers and Curtis Williams Jr. have taken a lot of backcourt reps in high school, and Corin Davis stuffed the stat sheet at the JUCO level, but all three are heading to their first steps at the D1 level. Flowers has the best chance at seeing significant on-court time right now out the gate. Time will tell how he fares in year one, considering he is a reclass. As it currently stands, the wing looks like it'll be Louisville's biggest strength heading into next season, due in part to the returning production and roster versatility. Mike James was able to rebound fantastically here from his Achilles injury to average double-double figures. JJ Taylor took a huge step forward, and there's a lot of promise in the three incoming freshmen, Flowers, Williams, and Caleb Glenn. Not to mention that White has the versatility to play two through four, and Danella Jonovic gives Louisville a potential shooting option if he can stay healthy and actually see consistent court time. However, James and Taylor will have to take significant strides over the offseason when it comes to their defensive and rebounding abilities. Time will tell how the newcomers on the wing will develop. That being said, you have to like Louisville's upside here, given that most of this group isn't pigeonholed to being just a small forward, and that allows for some really creative lineups. All that said, Louisville does not need to go reinvent the wheel here, but they do need to improve. After the last few years, I wouldn't expect to run at the NCAA, but if they can finish over 500 and maybe take a run at the NIT or some other tournament, they can really start building towards the future in their new era. All that I really do know is that a second year head coach cannot take another year with less than five wins.